it's just yeah recording yeah. okay awesome so thanks everyone thank you steve <laughs> uh my name is ariel with the intellicap team uh apologies for spamming you all with emails uh about joining this info session but really glad we have uh, a good turnout today um I am welcomed by uh, a joint team here. The we for f East Africa program is sort of being pulled off collectively with GIZ near us and IntelliCAP. Um, and the objective of today's session is really to share a little bit more about the program with all of you and how you can get involved and really give an opportunity for you all to ask any questions that you might have. So we have a sort of very, relatively brief presentation, I'll say. Um, so let me just pull up my screen share. Um, and we will get started. Great. So I hope everyone can see my screen. If you have any questions as we go, please feel free to, to drop them in the chat, but we do have quite a bit of time reserved at the end, sort of specifically for Q&A. Um, so uh, without further ado, uh, we have a lot of our team members on the call with us today. Um, so I will ask them to just quickly say hi, uh, and if you can just mention sort of what your, what your role is within the, the we for f program. Again, I'm Ariel. Um, I'm really working on the innovation call and really making sure we get really high quality applicants on board for the program. Um, maybe Steve, you can go next and then McBen. Okay, thank you very much, Ariel. So my name is Steve Tawia. I'm the team leader of the program and really uh, keen on getting innovators to scale and grow. Um, I work for NIRAS, and the idea really is to get uh, quality uh, companies throughout the uh, East Africa region. And uh, we'll talk more about the various elements of the program in the next slides, but in brief, uh, I'm the team leader. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you, uh, Ariel. My name is McBen McKenzie. I'm the technical advisor for the Water and Energy for Food Initiative. And I'll talk a bit more about it in a few minutes. Thank you. Great. Thanks, McBen. Uh, maybe Rachel, you can go next. And then Karnika, I think I saw she had joined. Hi, everyone. And thank you for joining us. So my name is Rachel Wangare. I work with Inteleka. And I'll be working with Ariel on the innovation call bit. Thanks, Rachel. Hello, everyone. My name is Karnika. I am. My role for this project is more from the project management perspective, and uh, I work with IntelliCAP. Look forward to engaging more with all of you uh, during the project. Thanks a lot for joining call this morning. Great, thanks. And uh, I'm not sure if we have Martin Benson or Jovan on the call, but I'll give, if you guys are there, you can give a hello. Uh, if not, um, Steve, do you see any of them? If not, it's okay. No, I don't. Yeah, um, actually, yeah that's fine. Actually, so just I keep. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there, there you are. Yeah, go ahead, Martin. Morning, everyone. My name is uh, Martin Deuri, and I'm supporting the TA for this project, uh, specifically access to finance. Thank you. Great. Thanks so much. Um, uh, and yeah, not not everyone could be on the call today, but just. Uh, you know, this is the team, you'll be hearing from us a lot more over the next couple of weeks. Um, just to quickly touch on the, the agenda really quickly for today, um, we're going to go, we're going to give a little bit of background about the, the program itself and the sort of history behind it. This is not a new program, but it is new for the region. Um, we'll talk quickly about the call for applications, what we're looking for, what that process is looking like. Um, then we'll touch on the actual you know, business advisory and access to finance services that will be delivered um, over the, the length of the, of the program for the selected uh, you know, enterprises. Um, we'll talk about how you can get involved. And then, as I said, we'll try to keep things quick and going, um, moving fairly quickly so that we can have plenty of time for Q&A at the end. Um, 
So first, uh, about we for F, I will hand it over to McBen and Sewu Steve to talk a little bit more about the program and the history. Um, so over to you, McBen. Uh, thank you, Ariel. So I'll, I'll jump into it. Um, so we for food, which is basically a water and energy for food, is a global initiative um, that aims to support the growth of small and medium-sized enterprises in the water and energy for food uh, sectors, basically what we refer to as a nexus. Um, by it being a global initiative, uh, basically our mandate is spread out through several countries globally. We operate through four hubs. So we have the East Africa hub, the West Africa hub. Uh, we have a hub taking care of the MENA region and we have a hub taking care of uh, South and South East Asia. Uh, but basically I sit in the Nairobi office, so I'll talk about the East Africa hub. Um, the initiative is funded by the German um, government through the Ministry of Economic Cooperation and Development, DMZ. We also have the EU, we have CEDA, USAID, and we have um, the Netherlands. So basically uh, at WIFOF, we see the private sector as a catalytic change maker. And so we work closely with different types of businesses, uh, touching on food production, either from a water uh, optimization or an energy optimization um, perspective. Uh, the overall goal being to increase the sustainability of agricultural food value chains and to address um, environmental and climate resilience in developing countries. And we have five goals. Um, if I could mention them quickly, basically to scale up uh, innovations at the interface of water, energy, and food, or agriculture. We also seek out to strengthen capacities of end users and multipliers, and to improve access to finance for, for companies, as well as end users, uh, and to support basically the innov innovation ecosystem. So uh, what we usually call the creating an enabling environment. Um, with regards to the aims more specifically as, as illustrated in the, uh, in the slide that uh, I hope everyone will see at the moment, we have uh, four specific aims and this is to increase uh, the food production along the value chains and to increase the income of uh, the BOP women and men in both rural and urban areas. And of course, sustainably scale up innovations which have been deemed to be um, positive interventions towards the, the, the three sectors I've, I've talked about. Ultimately, we seek to promote climate and environmental resilience and biodiversity. Um, yes, so we, we are doing the calls. I don't want to talk about the calls because I think this will be covered by someone else. So as a quick introduction to Cliff of F, I'll leave it at, at that. And let's give you something you want to add on to. Great, thank you, McBen. Uh, Steve, anything you want to add to that and give maybe some context specifically about the East Africa program? So yeah, um, thank you very much. Um, so on, on the back of what uh, McBen has said, um, in the context, there's have been two other you know uh, challenges that have been run in Southeast Asia and MENA, and they actually really uh, recently uh, issued. Uh, um, their news that they've selected 11 and 14 companies in those regions. And uh, we really want to leverage that kind of knowledge and expand the uh, initiative in East Africa with potentially uh, 15 to 20 companies that we're going to select across the seven countries that we, uh, we're covering. Again, uh, over and beyond the typical water, energy and food nexus, we're really looking at also digital innovations or financial innovations that can help enable those scaling and growing companies to scale their innovation and really expand it beyond their region, country uh, in, in the ecosystem. Uh, and again, if you do have specifics uh, over and beyond the key, I would say markets in East Africa, notably we're really interested in uh, having more potentially more companies coming from Ethiopia and Somalia it would be very good to for 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 us to have uh, potentially uh, you know more outreach to those two countries that we find may potentially have less companies. Thank you. Great, thanks, Steve. And and a shout out to Sean. I see Sean here from Tethered Up, who does a lot of work in Somalia, 
and was bold enough to ask if we would consider enterprises for Sudan. Uh, so maybe next time, Sean. <laughs> um, but hoping, yeah, hoping. Thanks, Ariel. Um, <laughs> so thanks for joining, uh, and and great to see you. Um, so yeah, as Steve mentioned, we we really do want to make sure that we're reaching some of those unusual suspects who don't always get the the, the opportunities that that our friends in Nairobi always seem to get. Um, so I will just spend a few minutes on the application and and during the call for application, really what we're um, what we're looking for. So as as Steve mentioned, you know what we're really trying to work towards with these entrepreneurs is to help them expand. Um, so that could be geographically. So we're really looking for enterprises who are looking to scale to new countries, to new regions, um, or they're looking to diversify their product segments, or they're looking to diversify their, their customer segments. So really, you know, wh whatever that expansion might look like, um, but we're really looking at, at, you know, entrepreneurs with ambition to grow. Um, and, and that obviously we wanna help them increase their annual turnover. Um, that's something that's a really a key uh, sort of focus area for us that we really actually wanna help them grow um, from from sort of a financial perspective that they're actually increasing their uh, their rate of turnover annually. Um, and, and as Steve mentioned, also really unlocking capital. Um, so you can sort of consider this a, a sort of a pre-investment technical assistance program where, you know, we're really looking at getting inputs from investors very early on for these entrepreneurs to actually inform sort of the technical assistance and business advisory action plans that would really help unlock that capital in the market. Um, and we are looking at, at, you know, unlocking several million dollars worth of worth of investments over the, the life of the program. Um, in terms of country focus, uh, Steve focused on, touched on this. There are seven countries that we are, you know, that we're looking at and would really like to be, rep we would really like to represent all of them within the, the cohort. So Ethiopia, Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, Rwanda, Malawi, and Somalia. Um, so again, we, we do want a diverse portfolio uh, at a cohort, you know, portfolio level. So really would appreciate, um, any referrals from, from any and all of these countries. Specifically, um, in terms of what we're looking for, ideally businesses should have a minimum of operations of 18 months. So the program is really not for idea stage, you know, entrepreneurs. These, these are businesses that are fairly established. They have fairly significant annual turnover, um, you know, and specifically we're looking at turnover between 50,000 to 500,000 euros. And that's, that's sort of an annual turnover number that we're looking for. And businesses that have, you know, at least five, but not more than 200 employees. So, you know, that's, that's a sort of a very specific, um, size of business that, that we're looking at. And again, because the objective of the program is to really help these businesses grow and scale, it's important that they sort of align philosophically and that they have that ambition to scale. Um, and, and as sort of I touched on a, a couple of minutes ago, whether that's expansion of the business product um, and increasing financing and looking to raise commercial capital, right? So, so at, because one of our sort of key outcomes is, is facilitating those investments and unlocking that capital. Um, we do want to engage with businesses that are actually looking to raise commercial capital from investors. So that's really important for us um, in terms of that alignment. And then of course, impact. Um, and you know we really are looking for businesses that are creating positive impact on smallholder farmers, um, as well as the environment and women and youth. Um, so the impact angle is also um, quite important. Steve touched on some of the thematic areas and, and we are fleshing this out also on the website, um, but basically within the nexus of water and energy and food, there are a few um, sort of value chain verticals that, that we're looking at. Now, this is not exhaustive for sure. This is just sort of a high level um, overview. So they could be working in production, they could be working in processing, storage, distribution, uh, they could be input suppliers, they could also be financial, um, whether you know they're providing access to financial products that are that are supporting the production of food. Um, or advice also. So it, it possibly they're offering advisory services um, to smallholder farmers to increase, you know, 
increased food production and, and again, still touches on sort of the water um, and energy bit, those would all qualify. Um, so there's a couple of example innovations here, uh, but again, this is not exhaustive, just trying to give um, a very high level sense of what some of those intersections could be when we're talking about, you know, water, energy, and, and food. Um, in terms of the selection process, we anticipate, and this is based on the call for applications that was run in MENA and South and Southeast Asia, um, out of the, the applicants that applied, about 70 to 80 actually qualified, so they sort of met, um, met that minimum criteria. We will internally shortlist 35 of the best, um, and then we'll actually prep those 35 enterprises um, so to make an actual uh, a, pre a pitch presentation to an expert panel. Um, so it's not just based on the paper application, but that we actually want to work with them, discuss their financials, what they're asked for, what they want to get out of the program, so that they can really articulate that um, to the expert panel of mostly investors. So 35 enterprises will pitch to this expert panel. With that support um, of you know, selection, we will get down to 25 enterprises. Um, and we hope from there, we will contract 15, at least 15, um, but 15 to 20 enterprises. We, we, you know, we know sometimes that there is uh, some level of attrition. Enterprises don't always uh, sort of go through to the end. So, um, so we're looking at really engaging directly with 15 or 20 enterprises through the duration of the program. Um, whoops, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, sorry, my, my laptop jumped ahead. Um, just in terms of timeline, uh, again, we are having this session with you guys before we actually launch. So the applications we are planning to launch on May 18th. Um, and, and again, we'll be sharing more information specifically about that. We will have two sort of similar Q&A sessions, but specifically for entrepreneurs and applicants um, to ask any questions they have about the application or about the program or if they need assistance um, as they sort of go through that process. And those will be May 25th and June 10th. The, the deadline for submitting applications is June 15th. So it's a relatively short window. It's about a month. Um, but, you know, I think so just the the key deadline to keep in mind is, is June 15th is the deadline uh, and we'll be launching the applications on May 18th. So in early July, we'll, we'll look to, to sort of start really getting that, that sort of short list of enterprises down. Um, you know, then towards mid July, we'll actually be working with those top 35 sort of shortlisted enterprises to prepare them um, for their opportunity to pitch to the expert panel. Um, and then by the end of July slash early August, we should be having that, you know, that final list of 25 that we would like to, to include in the program. Um, so we should be able to announce sort of publicly who the winners are by mid to end August. Um, and it is worth noting that, that the business advisory services within the program will be delivered over a 15 to 18 month period. So it's quite, a, it's quite an intense and long-term program. We know that investments don't get unlocked overnight and that that is a long process. So um, we're sort of in it for all the, you know, the long haul with these enterprises. So this is not you know, you know, a six or 12 week incubation program. It is, um, it is a quite a commitment even on the side of the entrepreneurs. Um, so, so it is sort of the, the duration of delivery of those services is quite, quite a long time period. Um, so I will take a pause here on my end, uh, and I'll hand it back over to uh, Steve and Martin to touch on the business advisory and access to finance components of, of the program, and they'll give you a quick, you know, quick rundown of what actually the program will offer to those 20 or so enterprises that, um, that get into the program. Uh, thank you very much, Rachel. Uh, no, Ariel, sorry. <laughs> um, so essentially, once we've selected the companies, there are two elements that are uh, two activities that are going to run kind of parallel, whereby we're going to really support the companies 
one, to establish a baseline in terms of what we can help them with and you know, focus on various aspects of that support or the, that business advisory, looking at you know, the financial management, their ecosystem support, and also simply their operations uh, and the way they are engaging with their ultimate customers or beneficiaries. So once we've looked at this uh, baseline information, obviously following the due diligence, we perform a full di diagnostic either internally or with uh, business advisors in the various countries that uh, we are covering, really to uh, fully determine where the company is versus the initial uh, you know, uh, milestones that we would have defined with them. Uh, and then on the back of that, we have clear action plan that would be the basis for the milestones and the results-based contracting that we'll do. Uh, and that essentially is fleshing out the key high-level uh, direction of the company for the 15 to 18 month support. And then the advisory uh, will start. Essentially, what it means is that we would contract the companies based on a kind of a purchase order or contract for services. And in addition to that, maybe get a portion of a small grant, but essentially it's really providing them uh, contacts with BDS providers in countries to support them in any of the expansion plans they have. And those BDS providers will be paid on a results basis or milestone basis as we go along through the 18 to 14, uh, 15 to 18 months. It's really about coaching, mentoring, and really advising them. Next slide, please, Ariel. So in this particular slide, we really detail the type of, you know, and it's not exhaustive really, but it was just to give you a feel of what we think would be, uh, you know, the key services that those uh, BDS providers or ourselves, depending on the country and the level of engagement would provide. One key one is investment readiness. It's always critical to make sure those companies that we engage with uh, are investment ready. The other one is supporting business development. Uh, if they're not uh, gender or youth conscious, then we help them define procedures and systems to be able to engage more with the youth and women in the organization. And that leads also to sort of organizational capacity development in terms of operations and really leveraging their talent and systems to execute. Uh, we can also support them in market research and analysis regarding any of the innovations that maybe is working in one country, they want to transpose that to another country and need to kind of understand the economics of that in that other country, that can be done. And then lastly, I would say, uh, you know, usually company, company, at least for East Africa is less prevalent, but because it's kind of the same anglophone system, law, uh, legal system, but uh, you know, supporting, registering, setting yourself up in other countries and making sure that your company is uh, compliant in the various countries uh, can also be supported. Uh, on the back of that, and parallel to that, there's the access to finance. And then I'll let uh, Wanjui Martin um, to, to, to talk about it. Next slide. Yeah, so, so once we've, uh, we've assessed the, the companies and the various BDS uh, business advisor service have been administered, one of the key uh, aspects is, 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 is making these companies investment ready so that they're able to access uh, a capital from investors. So I'll be leading that work and um, um, the, the work will be to, to make sure that we package, uh, the first thing is to package the SMEs uh, in the language of the investors. And even at this point, uh, because I'm showing the, the investors in the room is to, uh, we'll reach out to understand better what what you what would make you uh, invest in uh, water and uh, uh, energy for food enterprise. What do, you, what do you need to see? So we want to start starting out quite early so that we make sure that right from the innovations call as we head towards uh, uh, and we do and go through that due process of identifying the venture units then you make sure that we are presenting 
uh, companies because there's a, there are targets for us even you're supposed to leverage uh, 2x in terms of additional uh, additional uh, funding from the investors so once we package these uh, SMEs, then the other we the other uh, we package the SMEs whether through the, the various uh, investment collateral, whether it's an investment memoranda helping improve on that the financial models, the pitch. Then the next thing is to match make them, and this is to use either uh, existing platforms or or new platforms. Uh, so it and uh, where these innovators SME innovators can be able to start having these conversations because we are aware that it takes time to close a deal. So if this and one one event cannot uh, lead to a deal. So the idea is to use existing platforms, one of uh, introduction, but then from there, we are uh, uh, doing, we are supporting the enterprises to be able to uh, close deals in, in, with, with these uh, investors. Then the other, uh, and 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 when when it talks to match making is so after match making the next thing is to deploy, and we want to leverage both local and international invest investors, and one of the aims of this project is also to deepen uh, in terms of financial instruments. Uh, so if you are an investor out of there and there are uh, uh, innovative uh, investment structures. That are coming in, we always would whether it's guarantee schemes or uh, revenue-based financing or, or and and other schemes that we might not be aware. We want to take advantage of that outside the plain vanilla instruments that we have when it comes to financing, that is debt and and, and inequity and other structures. And then the last thing, which is going to be, is 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 to make sure that these SMEs close the deals with the investors, and you know that. A lot of hard work comes to that, especially when you start uh, putting the ink to paper. So again, the team, the role is the team is to go in there and make sure that we we we, we handhold. So this aspect of business advisory, which is really to access finance, has an aspect of coaching and mentor, mentorship. That is handholding these enterprises to make sure that uh, eventually they close in financing uh, from uh, investors, whether it's local or international. And when we look to still to local, uh, we are also referring to even commercial banks uh, because this, some of the some of the sectors traditionally they've not accessed uh, funding, uh, even working capital or even uh, very very flexible loans. They've not we've not seen that being emphasized so much in the sector. But we also want to tap on that as a project. Back to you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Nothing else to add. Steve? Yes. Okay. Great. Um, so we, I see a couple of questions coming in. That's fantastic. Um, we're just going to touch quickly on how you guys can get involved and then we'll open the floor uh, for questions. So Rachel, I will hand um, it off to you to let people know sort of what, um, what next steps are in terms of getting, getting engaged. So Rachel, over to you. Thank you very much, Ariel. Um, yes. Yeah, so we are really looking forward to engage with you on a number of steps. Um, one, because you are on the ground. Some of you have joined from across the countries that we are focusing on. Um, and that will really leverage your network to reach out to the entrepreneurs and encourage them to apply. So the way we are looking at um, engaging you for this program is one to spreading the word um, through your various network, social media newsletters and just um, mentioning about the program, um, encouraging the enterprises to apply. We will be circulating, as Ariel mentioned, the social media kits and our communication kits where, where we have all the information packaged and you can use that um, in your newsletters and social media posts. Then we know some of you have uh, run before uh, some cohorts, um, have supported some enterprises before. So if there are some enterprises that fit the criteria that, that you set down, um, kindly refer them and, and encourage them to apply. Then um, as, as, as Steve touched about the business uh, advisory bit will uh, require to work with uh, BDS providers. So um, that's also an, an, an area of opportunity that we see engaging um, you on. Uh, we can start about that later on, on 
um, the actual uh, process of getting enlisted um, as a BDS provider for the program. Great, oh, thank yeah. you so much, Rachel. Um, and yeah, as Rachel mentioned, we'll be, we're just putting the final touches on both the, the website for the call for applications as well as the social media kit. So we'll be sharing much more detailed information with you all um, probably early next week, uh, sort of after, after we wrap this call. Um, so I see a couple of questions coming in. Um, I see Daniel. I don't know, Daniel, if you want to unmute, uh, it would be great yeah. to know where you're based. Uh, and, I and think sort of... Ariel, sorry to come in. Daniel is one of the local BDS experts, so perhaps this is a question I'll take offline with him. Uh, okay. No, yeah, I think we can. We, I think I think it's it's good to answer. So yeah, the question is: Are the investors already known, um, or is identifying them and onboarding them still part of the the project workflow? So yeah, Martin, if you want to go ahead and and take that one, that'd be great. Thanks, Ariel. So we've done uh, and we've done a mapping of investors who are active in the sector and have. Uh, uh, sort of have approached their boats and they have done investment in the sector and in the, in, in the region. Uh, uh, but now we would welcome to uh, have additional uh, uh, investors joining our, 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 our the, 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 the document that the document that we have that is mapping these investors. So it's not holistic, and uh, we we'll, we are open to and that's this is part one of the promise of this call is not just for innovation calls, but is make sure that even as once we, we get to further towards the end of the project, we are also talking to the right people right from the onset. So the investors are not the source point, but you have an indicative uh, uh, indication of who might be interested in the SMEs, but it's not holistic. Daniel, you want to comment on that? Uh, no, I, I, just, I just was curious uh, to get to know whether they, they are already identified. Uh, reason being, I believe that most of the people that you have on board uh, who are locally placed uh, have uh, you know, networks. They have been dealing with a number of investors, investors locally, and we wanted to find out, I should say I wanted to find out whether there is already a list or, or you're going to also enlist us uh, to help in identifying these particular investors locally. Yes, um, yes, that will be that will be one of the things that you seek help from you once we have our our tip call on the uh, discussions. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Great, thanks. And and a related question, um, uh, following on Daniel's is is Henry, um, who's asking who are the prospective investors. Um, so I don't know, Martin, if you want to give an indicative um, sense, and then I see Lisbeth, your it's hand. It's about the money. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Uh, good. Another question. So, as I have said, when you if you are in the sector and when you map, they see you. Perhaps you want to add to this, but there we know that uh, some of the people who've taken uh, who've gone in and uh, supported companies in terms of business and finance support, but then the list is not holistic, and uh, much more could be done. And we know uh, is is that. A lot of capital is not meaning a problem. The problem is the expectations uh, and, and we could go into all that whole discussions. So we have an indicative uh, understanding of who could be some of the investors that we could approach to, but we also depending a lot on, on, on and that's why they are seeing even these calls, to, uh, these, uh, these, these meetings to, to make sure that we reach out to ask many people out there who will not be aware of this, of this project. Steve, you want to add? Yeah, maybe quickly. Thank you, uh, Martin. So to close on the potentially on the questions on the investors and uh, the pipeline, etc. The way this program has been designed is really to make sure that those companies that apply to the program actually are companies that maybe some of the investors would want to support, but they're thinking maybe they're too early in the phase, they're not ready for some aspect of it. So those investors would recommend this, those companies to us for, this, for, them to, for us to support them in the 15 to 18 months. That's one part of the thing. But you, if you as an advisor, you feel that there are companies you know in the ecosystem that have can be kind of been neglected by the investors, you can recommend them to the program, let them apply, and then they go through the process to be investment ready. So it's a two-way street, really. 
So we really encourage you to reach out to as many people as, as you know in each of the countries to be able to really you know, bring out the unusual suspects. To be honest with you, me as a team leader on this program, I'm very, very keen on getting beyond the usual suspects of this ecosystem in the renewable or water or agribusiness side, but companies that are really working the nexus of those three and are doing beyond that to really get the innovations out there. Thank you. I think there are a few hands up Great. and additional Thanks, questions. Steve. Yes, so we'll go to Hele next, um, who I think is from Incomoco, uh, but Hele, Great, uh, if you can introduce yourself, I think you're in Rwanda, but let us know, because yeah. <laughs> uh, I think your question really touched on part of what Steve was just mentioning. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, my name is Hille. I work for Inhumoku Entrepreneur Development, a business development support uh, company in Rwanda, and I am in Gigeli. Uh, so yeah, I have uh, two related questions. The one is around, really around the countries because I see you have like seven countries. Uh, so I was wondering if there's any, like if you have, yeah, we will have an equal number from each country or could it end up being that there's no companies from some of the countries? Uh, that was my one question. The other question would be, um, is the advisory, all that support, is that in person? Do you expect to have people in each country that would actually provide the support or would some of it be more like, cohort online where everyone come together. So a, a little bit of, of the logistics would be great. I can thank take you. that up if you want to, uh, or- Yes, yeah. please go ahead. So thank you very much for the question, the question Helle, uh, questions. So on the first one, um, there's no set number per country, uh, but you know when we look at the ecosystem, the seven countries that we engage with and uh, the, the type of companies that we have engaged in, in the past and we kind of have an idea that is going to be very likely to happen. We're looking at, let's say a minimum of one per country, ideally, but if we, we see that in one particular country, all from all the things we've seen, there's, there's not to, to standard, we'll have to have to think of it. But I can say it's at least one per country. The rest we'll have to see how you know, it pans out. Essentially, that's on your on your first question. Uh, the second question was remind me again. <laughs> it was when more about how to be delivered in person. Yeah, yes. if you are having people in every country, yes. if it's going to be online, if people are going to travel. Yeah. So ideally, if it wasn't for COVID, it would be in person. But we're thinking about a hybrid system whereby the initial phases will have local country BDS providers and ourselves to travel and do the initial assessment, onboarding the companies across different, of different aspects of it, m and &E, financial management, et cetera, et cetera. And then further down the road, we may have a, a process by which because of the current conditions, uh, health conditions, we may do online coaching uh, via different means that we'll set in place. But that's uh, critically uh, in, in, in our pipeline is going to be hybrid over the longer term, unless you know, the health situation changes. But to be honest with you, I am, I've coached a lot of companies, both physically and online. The online part becomes quite difficult over the long term. And there's always a need to be really sure that physically people can visit the companies, make sure you know, what I talk about virtually actually happens on the ground. So that's going to be part of the work, but it's going to be hybrid in summary. Great. Thanks, Steve. Um, Lisbeth, I'll come to you next. You've had your hand up. Uh, Lisbeth is from Nordic Impact Funds, and I assume joining from Denmark, but correct me if I'm wrong, Lisbeth, uh, over to you. Thank you. Thanks no, that's joining. correct. Yeah, that's correct. I'm based in Copenhagen. And uh, I have two partners in um, Nairobi, um, Humphrey Watanga and Duncan Onyango. You may know, um, know them, uh, most of you. <laughs> um, and um, well, we are very interested in this space, um, uh, in particular, the water uh, for food space. Um, so my question is a little bit related to um, at what stage you uh, want to engage the investors. Uh, Ariel, you talked about engaging very early. Uh, do you intend to have investors on the uh, select the expert panel you were talking about? Um, we would definitely be interested in that. 
Um, I would, will, would also like to mention that uh, I, for example, have worked with um, a, a MasterCard Acceler Impact Accelerator program where uh, a lot of investors were actually on the sort of ad advisory, uh, they were advising and mentoring some of the, um, the companies uh, along the way. And that has actually led to uh, quite a few investments in the companies because you get to know the companies, you see how they um, adapt to the suggestions, how they, um, how, how fast they are in terms of building those partnerships that you're suggesting and so on. And uh, it builds, builds that trust uh, that is needed um, in, for, for, for taking the step to an investment. Um, and we have actually invested in, in one of the, the companies that went through that accelerator. So, so it's just um, an idea to try and engage uh, investors also in this business development um, part, uh, if, if possible. Yes, thank you. exactly. Steve, Steve, do you wanna do you wanna take that? But yes, uh, Elizabeth, thank you for for volunteering <laughs> for the expert panel. We will definitely be <laughs> be following up with you. But but yes, the idea is to involve the investors early on so that they're actually informing the work plans for the enterprises. So the, we we can't develop these work plans without the inputs of the investors who would potentially be putting money. Um. So the idea is that we're really would be working with them to address the concerns that the investors are raising um, at those re you know relatively early stages of the program. Uh, Steve, you want to add yeah. on to that? Yeah, uh, very very quickly. Hello, Lisbeth. Long time. <laughs> and so hi, Steve. Good to see you. <laughs> um, so what I was going to say is that the um, that is the plan, and even better if yeah. we can get, and that's what we're trying to do, but we can get the due diligence requirements of most of the investors who want to engage with us, we compile a minimum viable kind of criteria that will help us guide how we develop the plans and everything. I have my own because I'm also an investor personally, so I know exactly what I'm looking for in transactions, but it's not in the nexus of energy, water and food. So if you have that experience and you have some sort of minimum term sheets or whatever that you need, you, you have, it's very welcome because then it also guides the way we are looking at the companies. Essentially, they have to be investment ready at the end of the program. So thank you. Great, thanks. Um, I will come next to Getane. Uh, I hope I'm saying that right. Sounds maybe Ethiopian. Uh, if you want to unmute and uh, just let us know where you're joining from and, and ask your question. There's a very interesting sort of thread that's going on from, from Getana's question uh, about access to finance. Okay, you know, that's a, okay, I'll go ahead and, and read the question out then. Um, so Getana asks, many SMEs are constrained by access to finance. Um, banks and MFIs do not consider SMEs without traditional house collateral. So what alternative collateral options are there for SMEs? Um, and this sort of sparked uh, some additional comments from Daniel, um, who sort of, you know, agreed that collateral is a big impediment and asked if there are any innovative financing instruments for SMEs um, that we'll be exploring. So Steve, I'll, I'll let you take that, I think. No problem. Uh, uh, Martin is there anyway also. Uh, but essentially, I, I totally agree with you. And so part of the program is to see whether or not some organizations can support in designing new programs that would support financial institutions to lend to those companies in a non-collateral basis or uh, other means. So I'll give you an example. In my previous life, we managed to get a, a green loan set up by a, an MFI that essentially supported a, a you know a household solar company to provide uh, you know household household solar devices with a green loan financing from an MFI, and that was an innovation in the country. But it essentially, helped one the the MFI acquire new customers or even provide this type of services to existing customers. But the green loan financing was structured through us. 
And in this particular case, actually, we provided that loan as a grant, as a grant to the financial institution to do the, that on lending with a the risking mechanism with other investors. So there are innovative finance financial solutions that is also part of this particular call, either exactly in the nexus of water, energy, and food. So that that's also the the element. So but we're very we're very open to uh, financial solutions that will also ease the burden of those innovators. But we haven't got anything set. So Great. And uh, Martin, do you want to add anything to that before I go to the next question? No, I think it's, it's well answered. Uh, uh, the other uh, sort of innovative financial mechanism we've seen is uh, some royalty or revenue-based structures uh, when it comes to uh, providing uh, 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 financing to these companies. So that, that's all. But we are, for now, we don't have any stack in mind. We, 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 we are very flexible and looking out for anything that is out there. Thank you. Great, thanks. Thanks, Martin. Um, so I think I ha we have one last question in the chat that hasn't been addressed, um, but we did set this meeting for about an hour so we can stay and answer additional questions. Uh, so if you have more, please feel free to put them in the chat. Um, so again, I'll, I'll let either Steve or, or Martin take this one. Uh, there seems to be a, a question around how for, for those uh, partners who are interested to plug in to offer BDS support, um, how exactly can they can they engage on that front? Uh, and that was a question from, from Margaret. Um, thanks for joining, Margaret. I'm not sure where you're joining from, um, but appreciate the question. Steve, you want to go ahead? No, I was going to tell you to answer. <laughs> also, I'll answer it. No, it's fine. I can take it. No problem. So. Essentially, in terms of BDS services, there are two ways. One is, um, we've, we haven't decided yet, but these are the two ways we're considering it. One is we would issue an expression of interest for BDS service providers across the seven countries, and then we would vet them, and then provide that those vetted BDS providers as a pool for the companies, innovators, to engage with. That's one part. The other side is, we can select the innovators and they could come up with BDS service providers of their own, but then we'll, have, we'll vet them to make sure that it's to the quality standards that we need. And then those ones can partner with the companies ultimately to execute the project. So the, the way really to plug in to as a BDS uh, support provider is uh, in the next couple of weeks, after, you know, during or after the innovation call, we'll issue potentially an expression of interest I think that's the way we, we lean in towards too. And, you know, give some flexibility for the companies if they're not happy with the pool of, uh, you know, BDS providers, we're gonna provide them to propose their own, but those ones will also vet it the same way as the ones that we looked at. Is, I hope it answers your question. Thank you. Yeah, and, and just to add to, uh, to what Steve has said is that as we uh, seek out uh, consultants for BDS support, in each of these countries that we intend to have innovators, we also have BDS experts that we already working with local BDS experts. So we'll engage them, and a lot of them are in this uh, uh, in this meeting and are asking some smart questions. So I just wanted to add that, and we'll get them in that process in addition to the entrepreneur. Great, great. Thanks so much, uh, Stephen Martin, and I think it's a it's a great opportunity for for those BDS providers on the on the call to get engaged. So if, if you are interested, please don't hesitate to reach out to us and let us know, hey, I'm interested. So then when when you know we start that process, we can definitely follow up directly. Um, I, I okay, great. Thank you. That, that's was Margaret from One Million Startups Kenya. F fantastic. Thanks so much, Margaret. Um, so I, I think we got all of the questions in in the the chat, but I'll, I'll sort of open the floor in case anyone just wants to unmute um, and and ask any other any other questions. You are most welcome to. I see a, a couple of other familiar names. I see Sally. Thanks so much, Sally, for joining. It's, she's with uh, Shona in Uganda. So um, yeah, really great. Seems like we've had some really fantastic, um, you know, regional participation um, and. I'll just, I'm just gonna pull up, uh, oops, 
sorry, wrong, wrong share. I'm just gonna put up our contacts so that if, um, if anyone does want to, to reach out with any questions that might come up um, after we end the call, um, you know, you are most welcome to. Um, so again, I mean, feel free um, to reach out to any of us if, if you are interested in, in providing BDS support. Um, if, you're, if you have further questions, uh, like Lisbeth, if you're interested in participating as an investor on, on the expert panel, that's fantastic. We'll definitely be following up um, and, and sort of post this call, we'll definitely be sharing more information uh, as, as Rachel mentioned in terms of the social media kit and the website, et cetera. Um, so if, if there are no further questions, um, I would just say thanks everyone for, for spending your, your morning with us. Uh, we hope this, this provided some good information um, and what to expect about the program next. Um, and thanks to the whole team for, for joining and sharing um, the, you know, your, your feedback. Uh, and Frank, yes, we are really share that. Um, as a follow-up, if you want to share it with, with other team members, maybe who weren't able to join. Um, we are hosting another session next Tuesday at 4 p.m. Uh, so for people who are maybe in slightly lighter, later time zones, uh, 4 p.m. East Africa time, um, uh, that again is, is for partners and, and you know, uh, investors who want to get involved. Um, so yeah, so the applications will launch May 18th, so stay tuned. We'll definitely be sending you more information, but uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, and, and I think the team can stay on the line for a few minutes in case there are any other questions. Um, otherwise, thank you everyone. Thanks for your time. And we look forward to engaging with you over the next, uh, next couple of months. Um, anything else, Steve, you wanted to, uh, to close with? Yes, um, thank you very much. Um, maybe if you can stop the, the share if everybody has taken it, I would request uh, the participant just to put on their videos. I like seeing who I'm speaking to. You won't have mine today. I was in the, in the oh, engine room of a ship. <laughs> you know, we're in the era of virtual, but virtual doesn't mean uh, black, black screen. <laughs> And I'm black, I can mention it. <laughs> All right, <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for, for, the, uh, for engaging with us. And again, from now on, don't hesitate to share the information and you know, mention the information session that's coming up uh, next Tuesday at 4 p.m. EAT. And again, don't also hesitate to reach out to us on the email, go to on the website of weforev.org to have much more information. I think what I mentioned also is there's a YouTube channel that gives a lot of information, videos about the other programs, not the East Africa ones. And we can see our friend back Ben in some of them. <laughs> All right. Thank you just, very just much. Before we drop off, I, I just wanted to ask, pardon me, uh, yes. Steve, pardon me. I just wanted to ask in the interim, what, what is expected of us uh, between now and the next time we meet so that we don't uh, slack in a bit? So I think uh, uh, Martin will reach out to you in mm -hmm. terms of BDS, et cetera, specifically. So or separately on that, don't worry. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So again, thank you very much for the time. And, uh, I'll let you close, uh, McBen or Arel, you can close on this subject. And, and yeah, just to follow on that, Daniel, um, we're just putting sort of the finishing touches on the, the social media kit. Uh, if you want to post on LinkedIn or Facebook, et cetera. So we'll be sharing that. Um, with all of you as well. Uh, it's, it's just, we're, we're still working on it, um, but as soon as we have it ready, we will share that with you. Um, so please feel free to, to share this opportunity as broadly as possible. And that will have the application link and the link to the website and all that good stuff. Um, so yeah, I have, I have nothing else to add unless McBen wants to say a, a, a thanks, but really appreciate everyone's time. Um, and yeah, I think we're managing to wrap up a few minutes early. So uh, yeah, we'll look forward to being in touch. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.